What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Agrarian Skies 2. Oh yeah. So I've been playing a little bit off camera here, just trying to get some things done around the base. Um, I was doing some Thomcraft research and I was running out of aspects, like for instance, Ordo I'm down to one of. And I need to combine this with the Perdido in order to make, I can't remember what, but uh, as you can see I used the last one and it just refilled again. So I was uh, doing some research on Thomcraft, like the mod itself, and it turns out if you put these crystal clusters nearby your research table, uh, apparently they gather aspects and then when you use... Like the last one I guess is what it is on the table, it can refill from the crystal. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, I've probably gone through <laughs> 10 stacks of crafting tables, just dropping them in this deconstruction table. Uh, let's see, we do wood. I'll show you guys real quick how this works. For those of you who might not know, uh, when you run out of aspects, you basically have to scan stuff to get more or you can use the deconstruction table. There might be other ways to do this, I don't know. This is the way I've done it, but a crafting table pretty much guarantees every single time you uh, deconstruct one to get a random base aspect. So that's what I was doing to get a bunch of these things. Uh, okay, we're done. Uh, I didn't want to do a whole bunch of those. So yeah, I went through probably 10 stacks of those trying to get more Ordo. It seems like that's what I was running out of the most. And then I found out that you can do this, which is fast, but uh, if you use them quite quickly, uh, it does run out. <laughs> so yeah, we just got some more Ordo there from the deconstruction table, which is pretty cool. Uh, okay, so some other things that I've done. Uh, oops. <laughs> Overshot it. I put the, well, I guess our cobblestone compression stuff in the ground. I just inset it in the ground. I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do with this. If I wanted to stick it underneath uh, our smeltery area, which some people suggested, but uh, we did want it out of the way so we have access to these stairs. I just decided dropping it down one block uh, would probably be the easiest way, although it's probably not the best looking way either. I don't know. Uh, but we can still see things happening. We can still see how much of each of these we do have. Uh, we got three of the times seven compressed cobblestone, which is awesome. Uh, we're almost to the point where you got the octuple. Well, we're about halfway there, right? <laughs> A little less than halfway there, but it's still doing things, which is fine. Um, our power area, I removed uh, some of our bioreactors here in the center. Um, I have the pipe running under here, goes up over this way, and then back down. Then it goes around over to our biofuel drum, that's where it all ends up over here. And then our tesseract, which is sending biofuel on a biofuel channel, is right here pulling out of the drum. And then that's being sent over here to these guys. So yeah, that's the way we got that set up. I was just trying to clean things up so we have access to these stairs without having to, you know, run around and all of that. Um, yeah, also with the Thomcraft stuff, I didn't mention this. I was doing a whole bunch of research. Like, I was going through the book and just trying to find everything to research and then researching it. Uh, some things I left, like these guys right here, which will give you the, um, I guess, the forbidden knowledge or whatever that stuff is. But pretty much everything else I've tried to go through and learn. Um, the energistic stuff, I was able to learn this Digicentia storage. We were having problems trying to learned this previously apparently uh people told me in the comments that i had to learn warded doors it's over here somewhere i don't know i was going through and just trying to learn everything i could yeah here it is warded arcana um yeah i think that's somehow unlocked this stuff over here and then yeah i was just kind of running out of stuff to research all these different aspects looks like i have this one that i can learn so we'll do that um, yeah, anyway, I was just trying to do a bunch of, like, the more boring, repetitive Thomcraft stuff off camera, so when we get to this the next time, <laughs> we will, uh, just be able to jump right in, which is gonna be more interesting, I think. Okay, so I was looking at our quest book, and I saw that there was a quest with an unclaimed reward, and I was like, that's kinda weird, I'm pretty sure we've done everything, and, where was it, yeah, assembly line says that industrial waste is completed, but I don't believe... We made a sludge boiler. I know I've talked about wanting to make one, but I don't think we made one. Uh, I think unlocking one of these that we did previously unlocked this, but I don't know why that was completed since we never 
got that. We got the sewers last time. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and read this quest real quick. So it says, the whole world was destroyed by reckless creators. So now we must use everything, even industrial waste. Sludge is a byproduct of harvesters. Sludge boilers purify the sludge and turn it into various useful things. Don't stand too close, though. The fumes are poisonous. And that's going to give us a full heart. We're going to claim that. Even though we didn't actually make this device, um, maybe we should go ahead and do that now. So sludge boiler this guy right here um iron gears furnace do we have this stuff i don't know if i have iron gears yeah i don't think we have furnaces we can make real quick that's not a big deal uh this guy i think we should have everything for that but yeah the iron gears is there yeah we gotta cast those okay so we need eight iron Grab this real quick. Uh, I don't have my cast up here. Turn off the magnet. We'll just drop the iron in there. Oh, I think I need to turn off the auto casting for the glass. Okay, we'll turn this back off. I let the smeltery drain out. Um, we made enough of the clear glass. <laughs> Let's take a look. Uh, how much do we have? 12,000? Yeah, I think that's, that's going to be enough for a little bit anyway. Uh, we need to grab our gear cast from down here. Did I leave it? No, it's over right here. I should really bring those casts up here now. I'll do that at some point off camera as well. Okay, so we can just stick that right over on this guy. Turn that on. We will make our iron gears. And those will end up right here um, in just a second. There we go, pretty quick. Okay, awesome, so now we should be able to make our sludge boiler. There we go, okay, so now we completed the quest even though we had already completed it. <laughs> uh, so the sludge boiler takes the sludge that we've been making over here from these harvesters. Yeah, all this stuff can be boiled down. Now I think you can see recipes. Let's do... I think sand is a thing that's made from that. So if we scroll over, we should see, there it is, sludge boiler. Now we can click this arrow for the recipe. So this will show us everything the sludge boiler can make. So peat and ash, uh, sand and decaying wheat. Oh, uh, yeah, that's the Thomcraft thing. I've been learning stuff and now we're getting these <laughs> messages and stuff. Um, dirt and clay we can get, gravel, more dirt it looks like, red sand, soul sand, podzol, mycelium, uh, heat sand, netherrack, and tainted soil at 0%, which is kind of weird, maybe it's like, I don't know, 0.01% or something, it's less than 1%, uh, that would be my, actually, I don't know, because this says 0.55%, so maybe it's impossible to get tainted soil, Anyway, we don't really need that. We got plenty of the stuff from our nether quarry. Which, by the way, guys, I know we're kind of <laughs> going off track here for a second. Uh, the nether quarry is still going last I checked. Oh, maybe it just finished. No, that number just went up, right? Yeah, our nether quarry is still going. That's been going now for weeks. I don't know. It seems like a long time since we got that set up. Um, so, yeah, the sludge over here, we want to... Get this stuff out of these drums. We're probably going to want to set up some kind of a central storage. So maybe I'll get rid of these drums and have the harvesters eject directly into a tesseract. Um, or maybe I'll just run pipes to all of these guys, have them all linked up, and then have one central tesseract, which will... That is the wrong block there, isn't it? <laughs> which will... Uh, send all the sludge on one central channel. I think that might be a good thing to do. Uh, so let's see. I think I'm going to take a moment here. I'm going to run some pipes, try and get some sludge together. We'll hook up the sludge boiler, and then we will move on to something else. Alright guys, so I went ahead and I connected this sludge boiler to this one with pipes running underneath, and they all run down the center here to a tesseract. Let's just kind of jump down here real quick. So yeah, the uh, sludge comes out of this, out of the harvesters into the pipe. They'll come over here into this tesseract. You can see this pipe's already full. The same thing's happening on this side. Uh, so now we gotta send that 
the uh, the sludge somewhere. So I have this test rig set up on a new channel on sludge, and we have it set to fluid mode ascend only. All right, so now we got to go ahead and set up the sludge boiler. I did stick it right over here on this island uh, all by itself. Uh, we're going to put a drum down to collect a little bit of the of the sludge, so we'll have a buffer over here. So I think we should just stick a tesseract right like this. This will be our sludge receiving channel. So I'll stick that there, drum on top, so that starts to fill up with sludge. Uh, we'll take a hardened fluid duct, stick it between the two, and a servo. Let's grab that guy, like so. So that'll start putting the sludge into the sludge boiler. Okay, so now the next part of this, we need to actually have the sludge boiler powered. And we need uh, somewhere for the items that the sludge boiler is making to go. So we'll grab another tesseract. Our last one, we have to make more of these again. This will be on the main base channel. So we're going to do item mode, send only, fluid mode, ignored, energy mode, yeah, receive only. Okay, so we're receiving power and we're sending items like we normally do with this stuff. Uh, so the next thing, I just need to put, well, actually I need to turn this thing on, right? Main base, turn on. So this is going, this is harming us, it's making that poisonous gas or whatever. Um, it's using the sludge and it is making those items so we can just go ahead and back away from this guy Yeah, it is making you hungry too. I guess you get hunger and poison when you're next to it All right, so not so good. It is kind of cool though that you can see the particles around that so you do know where to stand and where not to stand uh, So the next thing we need to do is take these other drums that we have and we need to get the the sludge out of these guys I'll probably just swap out the drum that we just sat there a moment to go with these and just have them uh, be replaced when the other ones run out um, so yeah I guess we can just remove this guy and stick is one of these full that one's completely full so we'll stick that guy right there back away okay so I think that should be okay and then the sledge will automatically be sent from our farms over here to this drum and it'll automatically be boiled by the sludge boiler uh, it would be kind of cool if we could see what the thing was making but we know what it can make uh, dirt and things like that so yeah we'll get those in our inventory over time uh, so that takes care of our sludge problem and <laughs> and the sludge boiler all right guys so let's go ahead and change gears this is our 50th episode, it looks like, of this series, so let's go ahead and do something different for today. Um, one of those things I want to look at, there is something in this mod pack called Recall Stones. Uh, I want to make one of these, let's see, Recall Stone, Following Stone, I'm not sure what all these different ones are. Dimensional Stone, um... I don't know if we need the dimensional stone or if we need like one of these following stones. So that's a recall stone. Okay, so this is all done with like Thomcraft. There's this one right here, which does not look like it uses Thomcraft. So let's try making this one. So we will do that and this. Dimensional stone unmarked. Sneak right click with item to mark a current location. Okay, so it seems like a good place to mark. Name for this location, we'll call this home. Mark location. Okay, so how does this thing work? Mark dimensions, current charge is 25 out of 25. So if I come over here to our power area and I right click this, that sends us right back. And that used, oh, recharging time left. Okay, that's weird. Uh, I didn't see it recharge or anything. Maybe it's just a cooldown that you can't click it more than once. Okay, so that will take us back to dimension here, dimension zero at this specific location. Uh, let's go to the nether. I still need to move the nether portal up above. <laughs> let's go to the nether and let's see if this works here because if it does, I think we're going to go try something today. Okay, so we're in the nether. I use it. Now we're back in the overworld, except it's a little bit laggy, but ever since we've been building out further and further, it takes longer for these chunks to load. Things are starting to slow down when we warp between dimensions, but that's fine. 
Okay, so this does work the way I expect. Now, I think it said that you can use ender pearls to charge this thing up. So let's see if we can do that. Um, maybe we need more than one. Or is this one that can't be recharged? Um, okay. Is it shaped crafting, maybe? Let's try putting it on the center. No. Okay, so this might be a one-time use only kind of a thing. Um, dimensional stone, recall stone. Okay, I need to do a little bit more research on this. I was sure that I read that you can recharge these. I mean, it does say current charges. Hmm. Okay, I'll be right back. Well, I tried a few things like putting into a vanilla crafting table and trying to charge it this way. Uh, the mod page on the, the cursed site or whatever shows that that's how you recharge them. Um, so I did some more Googling and people are saying it has to do with the or dictionary name, how it says crop enderweed or whatever. I don't know if that's the case or not. Uh, in the Thomcraft book, the very first tab here, it does show these dimensional stones, but it doesn't say anything about recharging them. So maybe that's something that's been removed, or maybe that's a problem that these say crop enderweed. I don't know. But it doesn't look like at this point in Agrarian Skies 2, uh, we can recharge these stones. So... Single use, well, I guess there's a few uses on them, but you can't recharge them. Once they're done, you throw them away, which is fine. They're not super expensive. But what I did want to do today is I wanted to go to the end. So let's do end, I think it's end cake, right? This thing right here. We have to make one of these to go to the end. So it's just some eye of ender, some cake, and a golden apple. So the cake is buckets of milk. So we're going to need six buckets of milk. Bucket. Let's go ahead and grab those. Um, did I have milk up here? No, I think it's all still down here, right? Okay, so we will fill up six buckets of milk. Two, 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 five, six. Okay, and we will make ourselves a couple of cakes. <laughs> I think it's the first cake we've made in this series. Uh, there we go. There's one of those, and whoop, 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 whoop click. All right, uh, I don't know if we have that golden apple. We don't. So we'll make that guy. And then we needed a few more of these. Wait, hold on a second. Blaze. We're out of blaze powder, but I can go ahead and grind up some of these blaze rods. That's not a, that's not an issue. Just go and pulverize those like so, and that's enough. Okay, so now we can make our eyes of ender. There we go. I think we just need two of those. And there is our end cake. So I don't know how many uses this has. I assume it's like eight or nine like the regular vanilla cake has or whatever. Uh, let us grab a fence post. Sure, why not? And we will stick this over here in the very corner <laughs> where I did move our portal to the deep dark. So we will stick our end portal here. Cake. Can I set that on there? I guess we get one use out of there, unless that is a graphical glitch from me sitting it on a fence post. I don't know. <laughs> that looks kind of weird, though. It was full of my inventory, and it looks like there's one bite here. Okay, so I think we have everything. Uh, this is a way back home. We are pretty well armored. We have food. I guess we can put away our Thalmanomicon. We can put that away. Maybe we'll just grab some... Whoops, I wanted to type... Uh, blocks but we should type stone maybe i should grab some of these stones i don't know if there's anything crazy that's going to happen in the end uh, i guess we will find out so let's go ahead and eat some cake should i click do i have to do it with an empty hand oh come on and i broke it <sighs> okay let's try this again <laughs> All right, guys, so I was trying some things to get this to work. Like, I got myself hungry, and I tried right-clicking on it and nothing. But as it turns out, you have to use Eye of Ender. You right-click on the cake to fill it up. And there we go. Now it's completely full, and that should allow us to teleport. So now that we got that out of the way, I still don't know if you have to be hungry to eat this or not. So uh, let's right-click on this and see what happens. Oh, it's just instant teleport. 
Okay, we are in a box and we have, oh, resistance two. Is there a beacon nearby? I don't know. Um, okay, there's the dragon. Is there anything that we need to be aware of nearby? Why did we have resistance two? I don't know. All right, dragon, calm down. You know what I just realized? We don't have anything to throw at these, so are we just gonna have to eat the damage? Maybe. I think we have enough health where it doesn't matter. Uh, just as long as it doesn't kill our boots is the only thing. <laughs> so let's go ahead and knock these things out. That should be fine. That does take a bit of health off me though, doesn't it? Hey, dragon. Yeah, I wish I would have brought a bow up. I, I was keeping a bow on me for the longest time, and then I realized that I wasn't using it at all, so... The dragon just hit me. Uh, yeah. Okay, well that is doing a decent amount of uh, damage. <laughs> so maybe we should stop doing that. Maybe we can just go ahead and fly after the dragon. I think we're faster than him. Just take it down real quick? Yeah, it looks like we can do this. Although trying to get to the right height is the only problem with this guy. He's almost dead, or she, I guess, right? Uh, where's the Okay. And done. That's awesome. Okay, so the end portal is down here. Uh, we did get the eggs and stuff, or I guess the one egg. Uh, looks like it dropped some yellow hearts, which is pretty cool. We'll use those eventually uh, to get the green hearts, I think. Okay, so that was pretty awesome. Uh, looks like there are the end... Is it ender lilies? I can't remember what these are called. Yeah, ender lilies. Oh, just die already. Uh, that we could grow ender pearls with uh, if we wanted to, but I think we're okay on ender pearls for the moment. A lot of experience that we are collecting. Okay, I think we're good. So, is there anything in the end here that's worth looking at? Um, I was kind of expecting there to be something else here, but I guess not. There's just clouds and things like that. Maybe if we take a look, let's find somewhere to sit for a moment. So, if we open up the map. Yeah, this should map out the island. So, yeah, some things that we can get. The, uh, the end beehives, which is, might be useful, I'm not sure yet. Should we, oh, uh, I was going to say maybe we should tell this thing to map out, but I don't think any of this has been explored yet, so I don't think we'll find anything out there. Okay, that's cool. I'm going to fly around a bit, see if there's anything interesting here. Otherwise, I'll see you guys back in the overworld. Alright guys, so I checked out the end, there wasn't anything else there, it was pretty much just the vanilla end with some of the hives and extra utility uh, ender lily seeds and all of this stuff, so I grabbed a fair few of these ender lily seeds, I don't think we're really going to need these, but you know, might as well just grab them. Uh, I did get the, uh, the dragon egg, and we did end up with five miniature yellow hearts, which is pretty cool. So while we are kind of doing some dimensional exploring here, I think it might be uh, an idea to go to the last millennium. So we'll try that out here in a moment. First of all, in our mob hunter quest, we did unlock two of these. So Dyer's Nemesis, uh, this wanted us to visit the end. That's going to give us a reward bag for that. Uh, so it says Dire Wolf hates Endermen, pesky creatures, always popping in, taking stuff. Not that he's scared of them, just that they're pesky. So this wanted us to visit the end, uh, craft an end cake, dimensional recall stone, if you don't want to kill the dragon just yet. Uh, too bad it doesn't say how to use the end cake, since I've never used that before. Yeah, I was kind of confused on how it works, but now I know. Okay, so claim that reward. And that's a greater reward bag, so what do we get for the greater one? Spawn pig, spawn chicken, spawn cow, and spawn sheep. Alright, well that's, all, that's okay, I suppose. I think we can craft all of those, so not a huge deal. And then hunt the dragon, completed. So that's going to give us a reward bag and a new title. So it says, the end is a strange place. It is ruled over by an evil dragon. Slay the monster and make the end safe for everyone, except dragons. So, ender dragon killed one of one. 
And we got a legendary reward bag. And this gave us a bone, bone crook. Unbreaking six fortune six. Is that, didn't we have one of those before? Rook. Maybe we did and I left it. Oh, that would be down below. If we, if I have it still, it'd be down here. I could have sworn we had something like that previously, right? Bone Crook and Breaking Six Fortune Six. Yep. So we've already had one of those before. It's a good item, just a little late in the game for it to be useful. So we'll just stick it in there now. Title Scroll, Righteous Defender. All right. So we will upgrade our title. Uh, how do we do that again right here? That one, this one. Okay, so now we're a Righteous Defender. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so let's look at going to the last millennium. I've never been to this dimension before in any of the modded playthroughs that I've done. So this is something new for me. Looks like there's multiple current. Oh, okay, no. So sometimes you just wish to get away from it all. Well, here's your chance to go to a place where there's literally nothing to bother you. So this essentially is another void world. Uh, right click the portal will teleport you outside the normal flow of time. From there you will inevitably end up drifting to the end of time. Just a few centuries before reality finally dissolves away. Uh, this place is known as the last millennium. All life, energy, knowledge, passion, struggle, philosophy, and meaning is just a few short centuries from being rendered fully pointless. On the plus side, rent is very cheap now. <laughs> okay, so in order to make this portal, we need burnt quartz. So we need quartz blocks. Quartz, I don't think I have any quartz blocks. So we'll go ahead and make some of those real quick. So we need four of these guys. We need to smelt those to turn them into the burnt versions. And we need carved eminence stone, which looks like purple dye, ender pearl, and some stone, which is not too bad. Okay, so we have rose red, and we have the lapis. Second time we've had to make purple dye uh, recently. Let's go ahead and convert this out of the blocks. That, that. Okay, so there's some purple dye. And we'll do that. Oh wait, do we only need to make four of those? Yeah, we only need to make four of those. Okay, so we are good. We also need the clock. We do have one of those that are already made. And then we need to smelt up the quartz. There we go. Okay, so we can craft that right here. Should be fine. That guy, this, all of those. And there is a portal to the last millennium. Okay, so we have the portal to the deep dark here. We got a portal to the end. I think we'll just stick this one over here. Uh, we do have our recall stone on us in case there isn't a way to get back. Ooh, that makes a cool little animation. Huh, I've never seen that before. Okay, so let's click on this guy and see what happens. Okay, so there is the last villager here in the last millennium. Looks like we need some torches around here. There's a cauldron of water. What is this? It's a lamp post. Is that all there is here? Is just this little platform? Okay, before we do anything else, let's just look underneath. There's some bedrock. Okay. Um, wait, is this just one block thick all the way around? It looks like it. I was kind of curious. These are cool blocks. I don't know if I've seen these before. Gravel road, huh? I do like those. Okay, so this is how we get back. What does our villager say? Uh, so I'm not sure what the last villager does. Whoops, that's not what we're supposed to do. Obviously, we trade something, and that gives us something. It looks like these might be broken, though, because I could swear before that these areas should be available. For you to see all the different stuff in there. Huh. Well, that's too bad if this guy's broken. Looks like he would have given us some cool stuff. Okay, well, we've been to the last millennium. <laughs> There's really nothing here. It's a cool little platform, though. I do like that. Um. Okay, well, I think that's pretty much all there is to see here. What block is this? This is border stone. Okay, very cool. Alright guys, well it turns out that the auto breeder that we had set up uh, before does in fact work. <laughs> we got a lot of cows hanging out over here now. Mm -hmm. I guess I left a stack of wheat in there and I bred all these cows up and 
Yeah, now we got a lot of them. So we'll have a lot of beef and leather here pretty soon. But uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to get anything from the villager in the last millennium. So I figured we should take him and stick in an auto spawner over here. And maybe we'll get some villagers that will actually have some decent trades. Yeah, we'll find out here in a moment. Uh, oh, we got a bee villager as a very first one. So that can be useful. Oh, we're going to get a whole bunch of these guys here pretty quick, aren't we? <laughs> uh, there we go, raw beef and the emeralds. And what do you got? You got pork. And then an emerald. Oh, man. Hey, we got a red guy here. Uh, emerald into glowstone dust. Okay, this is getting out of control. Uh, we got to remove that. <laughs> what are you doing? Okay, emerald into these knowledge fragments. Now, I think you can eat knowledge fragments, if I remember correctly. And you can get, like, those base thong craft aspects. So that would be pretty useful to have. Okay, so, yeah, we got a way to make villagers now, which is really awesome. I was planning on, you know, eventually capturing a zombie villager and converting it, but we don't have to now since we had one already for us in the last millennium. Very cool. Uh, stone walls. Let's go and grab these things and we will just block the stairs off for the time being until I figure out what we're going to do with these guys. But yep, that's going to do it for this episode of Agrarian Skies 2. Hope you guys liked it. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you did. But that's it for today. Thank you for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.